Hello again, welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand, and today we're up at the Fitchburg Art Museum where there is a knockout show by a group of artists called Tribe, and the show is called Tribe, same difference. And uh, we have, it's a show of photography, and uh, we have all of the Tribe collaborators here today who have produced this show. We have uh, Sarah, Alicia, and Kelly Casilio, and uh, they are performing artists, and we also have the other part of Tribe, Carrie Walinski, and uh, together they do marvelous things. I am so happy to have the whole bunch of you here today. Um, uh, I feel privileged, and it's great. Uh, you're going to find their work is very accessible. It's, it's so engaging. Um, it, it, it really makes you think. And I was thinking of that saying of William Hogarth where he says, beauty is what the active mind enjoys. And this show is certainly beautiful. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I thought we might just start off by asking you what you did before Tribe. <laughs> um, so um, the three of us had went together uh, to sc at school at MassArt, and um, at that point we started collaborating, um, doing performance-based work. Um, we also did murals and other um, pieces together too, like public installation. Um, but their performative work that we've done um, was kind of in the street. Uh, non-theatrical or non-performative base, but it was more just kind of as we call kind of tableau. So we would um, dress in different outfits and um, stand still in public spaces and trying to send some kind so of So more a tableau message. idea. Yeah. Where you would draw attention to a certain, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but then we, we also have the, you know, more um, impromptu, I guess, performance where we have the, the three of us dressed up in these three different characters and went out bar hopping and um, one of, she, she was the blonde chick and she was an artist and I was this sort of businessy type and we all went out to different bars and um, you know had, that must have been hilarious it was it was really <laughs> funny and she had a lot of people hitting on her <laughs> you know what I don't think I mentioned that they're I hope you noticed by now that they're identical triplets I meant to say that <laughs> but they really are identical and you'll it, it, it makes a big impact on the photographs I think and uh, so then how about you Carrie, what were you up to? Uh, I was a National Geographic photographer for 35 years, traveling around the world and doing all the things that you imagine National Geographic photographers to do. I'm green with envy. <laughs> I am too, actually. It was, it was a nice time <laughs> of my life. Um, and I left the Geographic in 2006, and um, uh, I'm, uh, at that point I was doing a lot of illustrative work for the Geographic and had become interested in art photography. And um, so it was a fortuitous collision. Uh -huh. And how did that collision take place? Where? How long have you been together? Uh, we started working together in 2006. So, yeah. Um, do you want to tell the story? You want sure. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if you've been out here before, you may have seen George Greenemeyer's work um, outside. He was retiring from mass art. And um, uh, I was invited to the retirement party. And George is a um, distinctive looking person. He's somewhat portly, somewhat balding, always wears uh, blue jean overalls, has a big white beard. And uh, I didn't know him, had never seen him. He came walking into the retirement party. And then another George Greenemeyer walked in. And then another George Greenemeyer walked in. And 
I was like, what is going on here? And it was them dressed as George with big bellies and white Did you know and, them then? No, I didn't know them. So you I, just went up to them and said, I, I want to work with you. <laughs> I don't think you even came up to us, did you? You just said to Rick, you're, I, who are those ladies? I want to work with them. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, after that we got together and tried to figure out how to work together and um, I was very interested in their performance artists. They were very interested, I was very interested in them as performance artists. They were interested in having their performances photographed and it turned out that we ended up doing something in between. It was performative art for the camera, which is what you'll see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So are you photographers also? No, no, no. You don't no. do photography at all. No. They are really crafters, though. They can make anything. <laughs> and as we look at some of the we work, like you'll see that, that they, they have actually done a lot of the creations of these images themselves. Um, now, the room we're sitting in, tell us about the exhibit in this room. This is called. You, Carrie. Come on. This is, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the sorry. title of this show? What is the title of this show? Um, in this, this particular room, this is um, In Search of Eden. It was a show that was developed for the BU, a BU Gallery yes. um, at um, Gallery 808. Um, so In Search of Eden is kind of like, it's not in Eden or Garden of Eden, it's In Search of Eden. Right. So it's talking about all those desires and right. all those be careful lest you get what you ask for kinds of things. Yes. Yeah, and Tell us about the theme a little bit more. You should do this. Alicia. I should do this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you why. Let me tell you why. Alicia should do this because when we work together, everybody is an idea generator. Yes. And um, although I worked on developing a lot of these ideas, it started with a, an idea that Alicia had, which Maybe you remember. Or you. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we were really working together yeah. a lot on this. Um, so this idea of um, these apple theme of Adam and Eve and this idea of temptation. So we, we basically um, thought uh, using that apple as a, as in, and, and the different kinds of apples. So, you know, ones that, like Granny Smith, what, what, what do you think of when you think of Granny Smith or Pink Lady? or Royal Gala, or Golden Delicious, or Macintosh. So we basically, Red Delicious, and Fuji Apple. So we basically just just took a, a bunch of different apples, like ones that we know are pretty common apples that we find in the store, and then we just started kind of riffing on them, you know, just trying to come up with imagery um, for them, and just tried to think of different kind of You themes. know, I'm so amazed at the cleverness of your titles. It's almost like your word artists as well, because you put these titles which just make you, they, they grab you, they're so funny and they're so to the point and they're so poetic and poignant. And I, I just, do you all collaborate or do you come up with a word and then somebody throws in another yeah, word? Yeah, it's all, you know, people throw out a whole bunch of ideas and you know the, the better ones start gravitating towards the top and then we sort of battle it out between mm -hmm. you know which which mm -hmm. ones are the best and usually it's I don't know it, it seems uh, once yeah. we get the right yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it, with the idea process it's like you don't even remember who came up with it sometimes yeah. because you yeah. go back and forth it, so it went much. around so many times yeah, and, yeah. titling is interesting because if you look at the file names for the original photographs none of them are titled with what they're titled because with. it emerged because, yes, as you're shooting, the picture becomes something else. It takes on a, a meaning Always a, away. as you're shooting it. And then when it appears, you would find us all sitting in front of the computer screen and saying, what is this? It wasn't like, what should we call it? It was, what is it? You this? knew you had the image, and you wanted to name right. it properly. Right. What is it telling us that it, yeah. that it, it should be called? Very cool. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, how were these images uh, produced? You know, they almost look like Renaissance paintings. They have such presence and realism and illusion and, uh, and also the idea of the triptych giving you that religious kind of feeling. How were they produced? Tell us a little bit about that. So these, these are produced with a large format camera and I think one of the reasons that um, I love being compared to a Renaissance painting, but, um, uh, <clears throat> but we're not. 
And the, <laughs> the, the, what we're doing here was trying to hit that mark that you're talking about, which was um, there is a kind of perfection in advertising photography yes. um, that, that is with enormous amounts of detail um, and enormous amounts of attention paid to detail in costuming and so on. You open a Vogue magazine, it's an art form. I mean, it's it is. It's definitely. Right. So what we tried to do, and as you mentioned, they're terrific makers, and this attention to detail um, s starts with their ability to, to use materials and um, careful lighting, careful staging, uh, watching as we go along, sh being able to shoot in a digital environment so that we can all see what we're doing while we're shooting it, making very small and minor corrections all the time. But the theme of this... It's just like painting. Yeah. It really is. The theme of this show, which has to do with the persuaders in our lives, in this case the symbol being the apple, um, one of the big persuaders in our lives is advertising. And so that was the basis of what is the quality that we're going to be shooting. You know, I think part of the real experience of this exhibit, aside from the content of the apple and the symbol and this culture we live in and all these other thoughts that go through your mind, is there's a certain aha aesthetic experience that I think the viewer gets when certain realities dawn on them and they realize they're being duped and that they got they know they're being duped and it's kind of a, a an exciting experience i think for the viewer and i think that's part of the reason the show is so phenomenally popular you know that the, the person has those moments of recognition and discovering those details too it starts with um the performative work that um that the Casilio sisters did. If you think back to the picture um, where they're going into a bar, one dressed as, one dressed as, one, and, and one dressed as the buxom blonde, and all the guys are hitting on the buxom blonde, they took off the wig. Actually, Sarah, you could describe that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, I mean, it was, it's, it's pretty funny the responses you can. You, it's very mixed, but you know people wouldn't believe when you know we would just tell them the truth. Like we so, wouldn't, we would just say, "Hey, I actually have brown hair." So the and, whole idea of identity and how we judge people's identity by their hair, mm -hmm. or their outfit, or or their eye makeup, or something like that, you know. And it, I was thinking too, so many times in these, it's not like art is really solving a problem, but it's shining a light on it. It's making people think about it. It's uh, engaging them enough that they put their attention to some of these issues. I'd like you to take a minute and look at some of the wonderful details in this photograph, which is called Macintosh. And the first time you pass by, you might not realize that they're talking about computers here. But uh, it, they're, all of these titles are so tongue in cheek, they're terrific. But Notice, for example, that the whole tree is constructed of miles and miles of computer cable, and that all the uh, little cords are hanging in the trees, almost like blossoms. And uh, the, just the details of those uh, gowns being made out of the computer cords, it it's must have been a phenomenal feat. So we're still looking at the uh, In Search of Eden series here, and the piece behind us is called Pink Lady, and uh, it certainly goes right to the core of identity and uh, humor and cultural stereotypes and so on. Uh, what, what do you want to tell us about this piece? Anything? Uh, who, who's in the middle? Who's in the middle? <laughs> Kelly. That's Kelly me. is the uh, Barbie doll in the middle. I don't know how I got to be to do that part, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that this was intended to be like this is the, uh, the the image on the left is the little girl who's being influenced by you know her Barbies and how you know she's society's you know, expectations of her. And, yeah, yeah, and then. Here she is on the right as a teenager. <laughs> so. Kind of rebelling against that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And the culture has made its mark. Yeah, the culture right, yeah, has yeah. produced three totally different creatures. And, right, yeah. and then maybe this is the final result and the, uh, the perfect <laughs> prefab person <Yeah>. who... <laughs> <laughs> kind of scary at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might notice in this picture that the uh, little girl, which is Sarah, That's me, yeah. on the left, who looks like she's about 10 or 12, do you notice the doll that's on the floor is the exact replica of the uh, picture of Kelly in the middle? So there are a lot of funny little things like that that you can notice when you have the time. When, uh, when um, you come to the show, one of the things you'll notice is that Kelly often takes on the role of the male in these pictures. And so um, the day of the shoot, she arrived and said, I'm going to be Barbie. I was like, really? <laughs> I think we were all taking a little bit of back. <laughs> but you know, that's part of the cool, she's more voluptuous perhaps a little bit. Uh, but the point is, the point is, it's, it's, bar, it's like really, really trying to be Barbie. You know, <laughs> whether you are or not. <laughs> Writing, yeah. <laughs> I think it works terrifically. And when you see it in real life, it's amazing how the, the terrific photography or something, the Trump Loy effect of that figure projecting into your space is really astounding. Yeah, we, we built the box um, for me to stand in, and also, you know, the details of like the seams on the arms, we just used thread to, I didn't you know, even notice yeah, those. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice the little Barbie doll seams on the shoulders? Wow, even the skin almost looks plastic. Yeah, I had a lot of makeup on me. Is it makeup or, it makeup. or high def? It was yeah. makeup, yeah. yeah. A lot of spray makeup. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It's, it's an absolutely knockout piece. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit too and tell you about some of their performance work because they've done some very powerful pieces that, you know, you do things that are political, social, all kinds of commentaries on our culture and our society. The one in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, inch by inch, you, you have to go online and look for it because we don't have time, but I did want to talk about, uh, we can show a little bit of the, uh, the one in New York City. Uh, titled Bailouts and Bonuses. Bailouts and, bonuses. and uh, when I saw the uh, performance of that on film, it, it must have been a really scary experience. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about doing that. The, um, that film, I th the first film you mentioned, Inch by Inch, was pr pretty much as it was. Uh, my son, Yari Walensky, who's a filmmaker, made all of the films that you'll see here in the exhibition. When we went to Washington, um, it was pretty much shot just what they did. Mm -hmm. When we went to New York, that was more choreographed. Do you remember that? Uh, it and has that sleek perfection of Wall Street advertising again. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Um, and I think that we had a pretty good idea of what we wanted to accomplish in that it was right at the height of the tension about the Wall Street uh, bonuses being handed out at the time when the American public was bailing out Wall Street and um, uh, we were staying in a hotel. Um, they got into their business suits, carrying um, briefcases brimming with uh, money, and uh, stood Falling on- Falling out and bubbling over the tops of the briefcases. Yes, and, and they were standing on street corners with uh, cops jingling chain, asking for change. And um, uh, I thought it was a stressful day, did you? So how did you find it? Um, I think it was. I think you actually, you were kind of the mediator with the, the police officers more than <laughs> we were. So. Well, your son captured something because when I saw, I think it was you coming out of the door, uh, there was a look of apprehension and also like assuming this other persona and then walking out in this attire and, and then, of course, the audience uh, in, the, uh, in New York on Wall Street sees not one, then a second, then another. I mean, it must have been a, a, a really wild experience for the people on the street. Yeah, 
it was uh, definitely, you know, some people didn't like it and some people liked it. But you so. didn't get arrested. <laughs> no. <laughs> Somebody put money in the can, so that tells you <laughs> the range of opinion. Well, there's a very different feeling in this gallery, even though they're still focusing on social issues, the uh, idea of identity really seems to come to the fore. I was also thinking that, in a, in a way, you're focusing our attention on things in a way that I find really interesting, where we're not given the answers so much, mm -hmm. but we're just forced to consider mm -hmm. and discover and think about for ourselves, mm -hmm. which I really like. Yeah, I mean, that's the intention of the work, is to get people to you know, experience it for themselves instead of giving them answers or giving them you know, direct statements. I, I think that's yeah. very wise. And also, rather than like hitting somebody over the head with a lesson, mm -hmm. you're s sort of giving them a visual image which they can interpret as they as they see things. Yeah, I was going to say, um, prior to working with Carrie, I felt like a lot of our performances were more like punch, like, you know, direct um, answers or direct uh, statements and... More political. We, yeah, yeah, and as we started working with Carrie, it was like, we want people to discover things and so, yeah, like, and so soften it up and see it's more complex and to, yeah. yeah. They're open-ended. Yeah. So this one, I think, really hits the button on identity, though. Mm. What, uh, what's the uh, point in this one? Yeah, so this one, um, this one started off with Carrie's. Carrie had this image of us sitting on a couch and having the same fabric, um, the same pattern throughout um, the background and uh, our outfits and couch. And, and um, we, we imposed this other um, meaning into it, which was um, how we feel as triplets. It's, you know, it, as an outside perspective, it's, it's a, you know, people are looking upon us as we're all the same, but we're just slightly different from each other, you know, and, and um, everything's just fine, which is the name of the image is fine, and uh, we just become sort of a, a background, a backdrop, um, so. It's amazing how you can look exactly alike or not. Right, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> also, I love the details of the shoes and all. Who, yeah, Sarah, Sarah did an amazing job with those shoes. I was struggling with those so much. She, uh, she, we got these shoes and she covered them elaborately and uh, with hot glue and everything. And, <laughs> and then I never made a dress before, so Alicia and I, we made our dresses and we had somebody make the other one. And it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then they just kind of fade into the woodwork. Mm -hmm. So I understand this is the first piece you made as Tribe with that. Uh, yes, and, it was. And whose, whose idea was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this piece is called Abstinence Eve. It uh, first started actually from a performance idea where um, it actually never ended up being a performance, but we were going to dress as nuns and go down to a school that was teaching the abstinence only progr program and hand out chastity belts. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Again, they're always playing that humor with some heavier, dark meaning. Uh, they sort of get the message across coded with a little humor, which is always good. So uh, the image has the chastity belts in them. Where did they come from? So the chastity belts we, we made, it's actually a plastic material called Sintra. Um, and we learned how to melt it or heat it up by putting it in hot water and you can manipulate it um, using that. And so we just kind of, and then we pop riveted, I think, it together and carved it out with a knife so it, um, and painted it um, just they to give it an antique. Realistic. Yeah. <laughs> We're saying they look like the torture devices you see in the torture museums <laughs> of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you look even closer on the belts, there's like little details like American flags and things like that, like a little hearts and other kind of gemstones and things like that. Well, it's so. a heavy hitter. Now here's a very different image where the girls are dressed as men as well. And uh, what's the title of this piece? This is Homeland. And this was that uh, shot at a time when Homeland was the American buzzword for everything political. Cal's dressed as a guy, uh, Alicia's dressed as the wife, and on the wall is a photograph of a soldier at some distant place who is a bit amorphic in their gender. And um, there's a great concern on their face. We're not sure if this is a soldier missing in action or if this is um, 
a, a lost child, whatever it is, but um, this was also a time when Ask, Don't Tell was highly in the news, and so um, we, ha we have a gender-neutral soldier there. But the, the essence of this picture, like all the pictures in this room, um, is when you get down to this question of identity, especially in the political season where we start uh, getting into our own tribes and we start thinking as tribes and thinking the other guy is the bad guy and we're the good guy. Absolutely. That's, that's uh, the essence of all of these pictures and it comes out here too. I love the, the title that your group is called Tribe. You have to look at the spelling of it because it's a triple I. Tribe with a triple I. So that's uh, significant, I think. It, the attention to detail and the quality of the f photography is so absolutely stunning. Thank you. So here we are. We have the real thing lined up in front of the pseudo lineup and makes you want to question your ideas about being able to identify people, doesn't it? Uh, transformed completely. <laughs> So uh, where can people see more of your work, by the way? We're almost out of time, so. Uh, we currently have a show at Gallery Chi Office, and they carry our work, so even when the show's not up, you can stop by and see the and work. And that's in the South End in Boston? That's right. And definitely come here. Yes. Because this show will oh. be up till June. You've you got to come here and see this show. It's here till June 5th. And believe me, there are so many more wonderful pieces. and things to discover that you have to see it for yourself in person. The show is here till, at the Pittsburgh Art Museum till June 5th, and you're giving a gallery talk when? April 24th. On a Sunday. On a Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, April 24th. So you're all invited to that, and uh, I think you'll really get a lot out of it. It's a great show. Uh, I by the way, I love the idea of tribe. I think that just says it all, you know. So uh, thanks for joining us, and I hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas.